Let's start by having you give us a synopsis of the story itself. What is the book about? Yes, um, it's about two girls um, from Viru um, who nursed a dream from childhood to get to India to see His Holiness. And um, they decided against all advice that that's what they were going to do. And they set out on an incredibly dangerous journey over the Himalaya, um, which I know two and a half to three thousand Tibetans were making a year before the security clamped down. And um, along the way, one of them was murdered in full view of a hundred Western climbers on a mountain called Choyu. And the Westerners were plunged into a debate over whether they should report what they had seen or to not talk about it because they were frightened of the Chinese soldiers and they were worried about their businesses. So the book is a microcosm of how the West deals with human rights abuses. You have now become very familiar with the story and many of the characters in this tragedy. Uh, would you kindly introduce us to some of the main characters? There are two girls at the heart of the narrative. Um, then they are also told alongside as the story of an American climber called Luis Benitez, um, who's an extraordinarily successful mountain guide and, you know, much the same as Kelsang, um, had a sort of unquenchable self determination and will to succeed at what he was doing, which was climbing mountains, and then by a by fate, ends up sort of witnessing Kelsang's murder on the mountain, and he then has to choose what is the right moral course of action. And he really represents, you know, how we in the West often um, deal with human rights and the difficulty sometimes when you know, there's a clear moral choice, but it's not in line with a um, prosperity. And that's the clash. And uh, then there's also a R Romanian climber who videotaped Malibur and, you know, just had an amazing effect around the world with his, his video and it tells his sto story as well. So, really, you know, four incredibly sort of singular in individuals, all of whom um, are, are, are just high, highly motivated and very, very strong wills and strong personalities. Yeah, and I think you have done a really good job of capturing these different personalities, you know, it's kind of almost like a clash of personalities in, in this book. And I think particularly when it comes to Gesang Namcho, I think that's the most tragic part of the story that this person, you know, this young girl who's 17 years old, she had only two wishes and her first wish was to become a nun and which was something that she was able to do. Her second wish was to see His Holiness the Dalai Lama in India and you know under usual circumstances for any of us living in the rest of the world how hard is it to see the Dalai Lama? You know, uh, I, I could you know see him um, any given year you could see him you know all we have to do all people here do is you know you have to buy a ticket to a teaching and people are fortunate enough to see the Dalai Lama but for Kesang Namso uh, for whom His Holiness is actually her root guru and her teacher um, I think for her you know this was the this was supposed to be the most important meeting of her life you know the person that she wanted to see have an audience with in her life above anything else and this was something this was her wish that wasn't fulfilled and and you know uh, when you read the book you just can't help but feel extremely terrible and like so uh, incredibly sad at the tragedy of this story um, and I think this is you know you have captured this one individual's story in a very moving way uh, but at the same time this is the story of Tibet this is the story of the average Tibetan you know this is happening to millions of Tibetans in Tibet you know because for them also I think there is nothing more important than to have one audience with His Holiness in their lifetime 
and how many Tibetans attempt this journey and how many actually make it and what happens to the people who don't make it? Nobody really, really knows that and that's something I try to find out in the course of the book. Because the high Himalaya, there's no witnesses there, there's no one to say what happens and often who makes it and who doesn't, is that we'll never really, you know, the saddest part of all this is, is we never really know all the people who didn't kind of make it. What happened to the people who, you know, died of starvation or exposure or frostbite or all the people because you might have been shot dead. Um, so we'll never know like the answers to those questions. It was very important in Kel Sang's portrayal in the book because each sort of character does sort of represent something wider. You know, Kel Sang very much represented Tibet. Um, Luis represented the West. Um, but the thing that, so I came to know Kel Sang after her death and the one thing that struck me in all of my research was, you know, how single-willed she was, but even though her story is desperately tragic and very sad, there's something very triumphant about it, which like affected me very profoundly while I was working on the book, that, that even though she was murdered on a mountainside, um, her spirit and the power of what happened and her, the purity of her quest lives on. I mean, it's, it's, it's in a viral loop on the video. Um, I know in the Tibet community, um, she's extremely kind of well known. And I think now with the launch of the book and many people who didn't know about Tibet and the issue will come to know Kelsang. So she lives on way beyond her death. And, it, you know, her spirit is as powerful now as it was when she was alive. Mm -hmm. I think the story moves at such a fast pace and so much is happening. It's kind of like a movie. It's kind of like watching a movie. And it's also really interesting and entertaining. The only problem is that this is not fiction. You know, this is a real story. It really happened. And I think uh, people are, I hope that people, uh, after reading the story, uh, will feel uh, compelled to action. Thank you very much for doing this interview, Jonathan. And uh, I wish you all the best with your uh, next project. Uh, but at the same time, I want to thank you for what you have given to the Tibetan people. You have given us a piece of our history, a piece of our story, a piece of our truth that would otherwise have remained in the darkness. It's my pleasure and my honor.